celebrating with an alcoholic drink, understandably, physics might not necessarily be the first thing on your mind. But it turns out that inside lots of alcoholic drinks, there's some really interesting and sophisticated fluid dynamics phenomenon to observe if you know how to look for them. So what better way to learn about fluid dynamics than to indulge in a cocktail or two? Let's make a gin fizz, which is made from gin, lemon juice, syrup and egg whites. First of all, we need to get the egg whites and the gin and the syrup and shake it up. OK, I think that's enough. And you can see the foam rising up. Now, the interesting thing about foams is that they can be either quite solid, robust foams, or they can be more liquidy and flow around. And in this case, what we have is a gin fizz with quite a robust foam. And the reason for that is that there are all these strong intermolecular forces between the proteins in the egg white which hold everything together. So that's the gin fizz, but if you don't like a gin fizz, how about a nice B52? So the 1800s were a golden age, both for mixology and for the science of fluid dynamics. And one of the discoveries that cropped up was the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability, which you can see to delightful effect in a B52, or drinks like that with lots of layers. The Kelvin-Helmholtz instability occurs when you have different layers of fluids with different densities flowing over each other. And at those interfaces, you get these kind of wispy cloud-like structures forming. So this, for example, can happen in the atmosphere when you have different layers of air flowing over each other. And then at the boundary, you can form these kind of wispy clouds. And it's exactly the same in a B52, where you've got layers of different densities of alcohol. And in the boundaries, you can form these pretty cool looking cloud-like structures. What's going on is that you have forces dragging one layer over another, and you also have other forces fighting buoyancy forces, trying to keep the layers apart. And when the fo <laughs> It's really complicated, I'm obviously. <laughs> OK, let me read this out properly from the script, OK? So what's going on is when the forces of one layer dragging over another become larger than the buoyancy force that's fighting to keep them apart, well then, parts of the drink end up descending into those swoopy, cloud-like structures. It's a little bit complicated, but at the end of the day, it's just a cocktail. <laughs> Time for a little game with something called the Margoni effect. Now, I've got myself some rum punch that I made earlier. Let's just add a little bit more rum. And what you need to then do, once you've got your rum punch, is get yourself a fleet of tiny boats. So what we've done here is we've made ours from sweet wrappers and we've just folded them up into a kind of boat shape and put a little slit in the back. So what we then do is drop the sweet wrapper onto the punch. That worked well. And then we put a drop of rum onto the little slit and we watch to see the Margoni effect in action. So let's give it a go. When the rum leaks from that slit in the back of the boat, it reduces the surface tension of the juice. So what then happens is that water molecules m try to even out the tension. So they move from the back of the boat to the front and that propels the boat forwards and sets it off on its rum fueled adventure. Now, a bottle of champagne, it may not be a cocktail in itself, but it is an ingredient in many cocktails, and it's also a mini laboratory for physics. OK, let's see some supersonic jets. Ah! Oh, that's good. So, researchers have recently found that when the shockwave moves up through the neck of the bottle, first of all, it's in the shape of a crown, then it kind of forms the shape of a kind of foamy cylinder and then the bubbles just kind of run down the side of the bottle. So here in the glass we have another case of fizz but it's a little bit different. What happens is in the wine you have yeast and that's eating up the sugar in the grapes and producing carbon dioxide which is dissolved 
in the champagne and is then bubbling up into the air. So I guess all that remains is to toast to the science of fluid dynamics. That's good, it's going down really well. I like it.